right here in the third column, first row, Mastering Probability Newsletter by Steve Rhodes. Now we have Steve Rhodes come on every Monday and he gives us a little bit of an insight into what he's looking at for the week. And uh, what, I, what I really enjoy about having Steve come on is he picks things that people probably don't expect, right? Um, I think some of the metrics he uses, how he's determining if these moves are legit or not, and then what the kind of the general macroeconomic outlook is looking like. Um, the metrics he chooses, I think, are extraordinarily interesting. If you've missed any of those within the past, I would say, month or something, go to TFNN on YouTube, Tiger Financial News Network. You can go to our videos and just type in Steve Rhodes, Jacob Shoup, and you should be able to find those. Steve, how are you doing? Jacob? How are you doing? Good to, good to talk to you, Steve. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, next week it's Thanksgiving. It, How about oh, that? Oh, man. Does it, yeah. Steve, it, time to get does this time just keep going fast the more? I, the yeah. older you get, the yeah. older you get, it goes by even quicker. Yeah, I'm starting to uh, figure that out. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> but uh, so do you have a favorite, uh, you know, on the Thanksgiving Day table, what's your number one or number two items, would you say? Steve, or, do you, I, or, or none? I am a huge pumpkin pie fan. I don't know what oh. it is in some past life I must have made it because I can't get enough of this stuff. I usually don't eat sweets, but pumpkin pie is one of my biggest things. And I like the cranberry sauce for some reason too. Now, real cranberry sauce, you yes. know, like the, uh, oh, okay. So yeah, more both the can work too, if you get them from the can as well, just depending on who I'm with, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I sort of have the, uh, I like that jellied cranberry. Oh, so but just maybe too. one little slice, you know, but it's sure. all it's all sugar, right? That's about all that your <laughs> right. your body can handle. So, um, uh, so uh, th thanks for that uh, introduction. I think today we'll take a look at some things that might be helpful and eye-opening to everybody out there. You don't, I'm going to share some information that you do not need to be a technical trader uh, to understand uh, this data point. So the first thing that I thought that we would do is just a quick review uh, since the election cycle is now over. Uh, this is the Dow. This is the way that the Dow typically trades the first year of, of a Republican presidential cycle, uh, going back uh, 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 going back to all the data that I've got, which is, takes us back to 1897. Now. The question is, I mean, Trump's a second term president, but not in a row. So I'm not really sure which to look at. Is this the first term, um, you know, because he's had some time off? So in any event, right what? here, I've got uh, this is the cycle that includes the 1929 crash out there. Uh, this shows us that we tip now. This doesn't. Um, uh, differentiate a ton from just a normal cycle. And what I mean by that is we typically get a high in the first week of January. We then move lower into the end of January, early February. And then we typically rally up into the, you know, the old sell in May type cycle out there. Um, we then move lower. We then uh, kind of have this little summer rally into the end of July out there. And then we move lower typically into the October, November time frame. Now, this is with 1929. If I exclude 1929, you can kind of see the pattern here. And this one actually is more aligned with a traditional, if we just took all of the years going back to 1897, it would be similar to this, which is a January high, a January to early February low really a June-ish type high out there before the market moves lower into September. And then we have that Santa Claus rally kick in. So just wanted to reshare with folks. Can people take screenshots of this? And they have it there. This is not going to change over the next couple of years or anything like that. Um, so that's the seasonal cycle. If I take a look at how is the Dow trading, as you know, I don't just look at how the Dow trades in terms of U.S. currency, but in this chart here is showing us major currencies. And it turns out that last week, the Dow made a new all-time high in every major currency. Now, folks, if, if those of you that have uh, heard uh, Jacob and I discuss this before, um, the best bull markets are the ones where an instrument is moving higher in all major currencies. Of course, Jacob, the caveat to that would be what? Just the opposite would be true, right? Absolutely. The best, the best bear markets are when instruments are moving lower all at the same time. So this now, now and folks that listen to the Trader's Ed show at 11 o'clock, no, we talk about this maybe a couple of times a week or when, when it's relevant out here. Uh, if we took a look at gold, I don't have that gold, the same set of charts, but for gold, gold topped on the exact same day for every major currency. That's kind of a dangerous thing out here. Here... It's very close. Most of those tops, uh, highs, I should say, at this stage here, came in last week. So this is just simply a caution signal out here. Nothing has been broke yet. No key levels of support have been broken. But I do want people to be cautious, especially if they listen to me and how the uh, Dow or gold trades in all the different currencies out here. 
this chart uh, was uh, uh, really uh, developed originally by a guy named Bud Rolfs. Uh, going back maybe 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, he was a host uh, at uh, TFNN, and he created these, what he referred to as primary trading ranges. I refer to them now as horizontal trading ranges. Bud used to do it visually. I've done it electronically. When I say it, uh, if you take a look at the very right-hand panel, Jacob, you'll see yeah. a number, and then you'll see a dash, and then another number. That dash and another number, so for example, 10,544.40 has had 54 on a monthly basis, 54 opens or closes at or near that level. The next highest level really came in uh, uh, at around the uh, uh, 12 times at 7607. We take a look at those two, that dollar spread, all of these other horizontal lines are equal to that dollar spread. Well, it turns out if we take a look at this, is the monthly time frame chart that we're looking at, I also have diagonal rising price channels out here. You can also see an A to B equals CD pattern. The A to B equals CD pattern for the Dow gets us up to the 47,399 level. However, what we can see here is price is really running into resistance. Now, resistance being this uh, uh, diagonal, uh, diagonal uh, rising price channel level, and as well as near the uh, primary horizontal trading range at the 42,853 level. This is just another sign of caution, but it's just a short-term sign of caution because I do believe that the A to B equals CD pattern will eventually eventually fulfill itself up at the 47,399 price objective. Now, if I take a look at how the Dow is trading a daily time frame, a weekly time frame, and a monthly time frame, you'll see that same A to B equals CD pattern on the very right-hand side. What we'll notice here is uh, when the market closes next Friday, if it closes above 43,325, what that's going to do is that will negate, there's a Rosemont indicator top on the monthly time frame. Okay. So come next Friday, even though it'll be after Thanksgiving, everybody will probably still, well, did like, do you like leftovers? Of course. Okay, so people are going to be leftovers. You, of course, will be eating <laughs> pumpkin pie leftovers if there are any. Um, so, uh, and I believe the market is open till one o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, okay. the day after Thanksgiving. So, what people want to note on their pad of paper: Does the Dow close about forty three three twenty five oh nine or not? If it does, then the longer term chart says I'm ready to continue moving higher. The weekly time frame chart for the Dow. So, when we form major highs out there, Jacob, what I my experience in going back all the way eighteen ninety six out there is when there's a significant top you will see a clear topping signal for the daily the weekly and the monthly time frame i'm giving you a parameter that come next friday we may have the monthly time frame that negates that signal right now the weekly time frame does not have a top in fact if anything price is pulled back to a key area of support right now yeah. it's about the 43 288 level it's what i refer to as an oscillator and change line folks can subscribe to mastery probability do it for 30 days doesn't cost them anything and learn a real important level out here to be watching the daily time frame does have a top it's a sell the d point top out there and price might actually pull back further but the first key level that we're watching for really in the daily time frame ties us to the weekly time frame Jacob, and that's at 43,288. So that level may change by a dollar or two, but that's another number that folks want to look at when it comes to every Friday, because this is a weekly time frame chart. So how about when we come back from the uh, break here, I've got some, uh, I haven't even gotten to the, uh, to what uh, every trader, don't have to be technical, just simply a level that you're going to want to watch and observe for the next four years. Fantastic. Well, Steve, stay right there. And folks, we'll be right back with Steve Rhodes right after this break. Welcome back, everyone. We are joined right now by Steve Rhodes, the author of the Mastering Probability Newsletter and host of the Trader's Edge 11 a.m. Eastern Time right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Right now, you can get Mastering Probability for $149 a month, $6.95 for six months, which is a two, nearly $200 savings. Or you can go to the full shebang and get $11.95 for one year. That is a $593, 33.17% off Folks, if you never subscribed before, you can do this risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee for all first-time subscriptions if for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you, but we're betting it will. Steve, we were talking about uh, the Dow before we went to the break, and I know you got some other stuff you want to take a look at as well. Yeah, so what uh, we want folks to do is write down this number, 43,288. Yep. That number's going to change by a couple dollars or two as price moves up and down. But if on a Friday we see price close below that, that tells us the Dow has lost its momentum and we're likely to see yep. a further retracement. If that level gets tested and it holds, well, then that is a bullish uh, signal out there. So that's one thing that I wanted uh, folks to uh, uh, to share with folks. This chart here, before I get into, uh, before I get into uh, what I was going to share with folks, is uh, this is another tool that I use. It's a great 
great tool because this helped me understand the dance moves of an instrument. And I put this on a yearly time frame. This takes us back into the uh, early 1900s out there. And you'll see the black digits represent consecutive moves higher. The uh, red digits, consecutive moves lower out there. The interesting thing is we go back into the 1920s. The longest uh, decline that we've had lasted for four years. That was a decline going back, I think, into 1932 out there. Most of those declines are two or three bars out there. You go back in the 1940s, although you can't really see the data because of the uh, the scale that we're looking at here. You know, that being in the, uh, you know, 100 area, now we're at 43,000 out there. But when we start moving into the 75 uh, time frame, you can see a two-bar retracement, two-year retracement. The last time we had three uh, years to the downside. Was it the 1999, 2000 uh, top out there? Oftentimes, it's just one move to the downside. Now, to the upside, it's not uncommon to see two bars be the extent of a move, two or three. So, again, this is just simply another caution sign out there uh, from a yearly time frame. And what this then leads us to is what I really wanted to be able to share with folks. And for this, we're going to go to the live screens out here. So what I started doing, I said, and I had no idea where this was going to lead me when I started. But when I did start it out, and I got to, you're not going to see it here on this page, but you will on a future page. I was like, son of a gun. <laughs> now, what I've identified here is the beginning of a presidential term. And what I've used for the beginning of a presidential term is a day after election day. How did the market respond then? So the key number to be writing down as we speak right now as it relates to the Dow is 4285040. That was the open on election day of uh, the day after election day this year out there. And so people want to note that on their pad of paper. If we go take a look at the presidential term for the uh, Biden administration out there, that number would have been 2713869. We can see that price never moved below that level. Obviously, very nice performance over a four-year period of time. Nothing uh, wrong there. Now, let's continue going back back. If we go back here, and this is what really opened my mind up, um, if we take a look at the first Trump administration, and the opening there was 17 964 What kind of dumbfounded me was the uh, was the uh, COVID crash out here. And the yeah. COVID crash basically took price all the way back mm -hmm. to where the first term began, just slightly above that. Folks, we use these numbers here a little bit as guidelines. You want to see where they're trading. But price moved all the way back down there. Now, there was a pattern associated with that bottom as well, but I thought that was kind of interesting. The reason is because this line that we're taking a look at out here, as you'll see, is going to be a real important line of resistance or support. In this case here, that acted as support, and really before he was out of office, you know, he basically the market had re regained uh, most of its uh, loss. Now, there no, most people know that, but not, most people had, didn't identify uh, what that opening price was on the day after the election. Let's go back further to the prior uh, election out here, and that would be Obama's second term. So we've noted that. Notice out here, I'm just going to move this off like this and maybe expand it out just a tad. So here on uh, after uh, the second term for Obama, price started moving lower. Now, I wasn't going and taking a look to see if there was some kind of pattern down there, Jacob, you know, that identified that bottom. Just using this number, trying to come up with something that really isn't that technical oriented that every one of our listeners right now or, or, any, or any other time uh, can use this. Once price uh, started closing above that level, and it really, and this is a daily time frame chart that we're looking at. We had a nice wide ranging bar in the day of, um, uh, if I could just get my cursor on there right around uh, January the 2nd out there. And then price never looked back. Yeah. So again, want to note that price out here. Let's go take a look at the first term of the Obama administration. Remember when we are taking a look at the uh, first term of the Trump administration, how the COVID crash came all the way back to that opening um, an opening price, if you will, of yes. the beginning of the term. Well, take a look at this here. During that uh, first term of the Obama administration, once price got above that level, it came back and tested and rejected that key area of support, which was at 96.1660. It did that back in July of 2010, and then it was off to the races. Now, of course, if we start trading below that level, now we're not doing that right now, but that's important for people to be, be paying attention to. It certainly tells you, at least from a shorter term, because this is a daily time frame chart that we're looking, whether you want to be long or short out there, at least understand what the message of the markets are. If we go back and take a look at Bush Jr.'s uh, second term out here, we can see uh, again, here's the opening at uh, 10037 and then back in the April time frame in 2005, price pulled back, tested, and rejected that line. Pretty cool, isn't it? This is, it, it, and it's wild to 
just to see how much we've run, not, obviously not even from this point, but, but even going back to Biden's first term, right? I mean, this is such a strong market in general, and it has been for, for quite a while. It's nuts to see this. Well, but again, if you took a look at those yearly charts out there, you know, it's usually two steps forward, one step right. back, maybe three or four steps forward, one step uh, back out there. Here's Bush's first term out here. And in Bush's first term, the uh, key resistance level was about 11,002. Mm -hmm. We got above it back in the uh, middle May time period, but then we just clearly rejected it right around the middle of June and just continued to move lower. So this line, and again, when I started taking a look at this, Jacob, yeah. I had no objective. It was just kind of curious yeah. out there, really. I didn't know what I was going to see. And then when I started seeing how price reacted at these levels, it was like, you know, this is something that everybody can use to help understand what's going on inside their portfolio. Here's the Clinton second term out there. We could see we basically just took off, never even came back to test that opening price. Now, this is a different opening price type theory out there. Sure. Here's Clinton during his first term. We can see the opening price was tested for a couple of months, well, really for a month. And then uh, towards the end, end of January, things just took off, but it was contesting that opening price level out there. If we go back further, here's uh, Bush Sr.'s first term. Price never got back to that open. Well, it did get back to that opening level back in the uh, January, early January time frame, and then it took off out there. Uh, if we can go take a look at Reagan's uh, second term, again, the same concept. Price started trading lower during the second term, and then you can see right into about the middle of May time frame, that level was tested and rejected. So, folks, you just simply want to note that opening price on the the Dow maybe works the same way for the S&P 500 as well. So, Jacob, that's all that I've got to share other than uh, uh, I hope you have a great, uh, well, we're going to talk next week on Monday. Sounds good to me. Steve, thank you. Great presentation yet again. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern time from Trader's Edge. Take care.